chapter 12, verse 1. You know, on Wednesday, I was teaching about prayer, and uh, I was, uh, maybe this is how I can explain it. I was talking about when prayer becomes a sacrifice. When prayer, although that was not the topic, but we were talking about when prayer becomes a sacrifice. And we saw that only sacrifices rise from the earth to the heavens. Only sacrifices rise from the earth to the heavens. So before your prayer becomes a sacrifice, we said and we saw that when we offer prayers, they reach to God as incense and fragrance and sweet aroma. So until your prayer becomes a sacrifice or an offering, you cannot be sure that it, it reaches heaven. So it must be a prayer of sacrifice. That prayer itself must be a sacrifice or an offering. That is why David was saying that let my prayers be like a sacrifice to you. That was in Psalms 142. And he also said that let the lifting of my hands be set before you as an offering or an evening sacrifice. So our prayers are sacrifices. So when the Bible says here, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. It is telling us what our service is. Or many versions, that reasonable service, it says your worship, your reasonable worship or your worship. So when we are singing and telling the Lord that I am your worship today, what do we mean? When we tell him that I offer myself as a living sacrifice, the Bible is telling us that we present our bodies. We present our bodies. We present our lives. When it is talking about our bodies, it is talking about our daily, our daily lives and our daily events. Our body parts, whatever your hands does, whatever your mouth does. So everything about you. The Bible is saying, commit yourself to the Lord. You offer yourself, your bodies, as living sacrifice. We are going to examine this verse another, another day very well. But today I just wanted to show you how especially you offer yourself in the place of prayer. One of the main reasons as to why we offer and sacrifice ourselves is that God's will may be done through us in the area of intercession. When I'll be teaching you about prophetic intercession, I'll teach you this is whereby you offer yourself as this verse is saying, and then God puts his mind or his plans in you, and then you pray for those plans, the plans of God, the agenda of God. That is what prophetic intercession means. But number one, you must offer yourself to come to that level where you are not just praying, but you are praying, that is where you pray even in line with the word of God. You are praying like now God reveals to you what he is doing with Kenya this year. And so as you pray, you are praying according to his will and his mind. So you must offer yourself that the Holy Spirit may pray through you. You know the Bible says that we do not know what to pray for or how we ought to pray. That is in Romans 8 verse 26. But the Bible says, but the Holy Spirit intercedes in us or through us with groanings that cannot be uttered by words. So there are moments even as we do not know what we are praying for, but because we have come to a place where we have fully offered ourselves, the Holy Spirit is able to pray through us. So he intercedes for families through us. He intercedes for nations through us. Now that is one section where even you, you do not know what you are praying for. But what I am talking about today, especially when we come to this prophetic prayer and prophetic intercession, is where God reveals his mind to you concerning a specific thing. And then you pray for that thing according to the revelation that God has given you. Our theme verse for this year is coming from Ephesians chapter 2, not Ephesians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. Let's read that. Let's go down and then uh, I am going to tell you what we are going to pray for. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. Thank you. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. I'm so much interested in this part. I'll take a whole sermon to just teach this last part. Those who love him. But basically, I want us to know that this season we are in, as I talked about the supernatural manifestation, God wants us to manifest supernatural things 
hidden things, things that men have not known, things that men have not seen, things that men have not had. God wants us to, to be able to manifest them. But how can you manifest them if you are, you are still the same with those who have not seen them, those who have not heard them, those who have not or even perceived them? So for you to be able to manifest them, you must come to the place of revelation. So the next verse says, But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. So even if these things no man or no eye has seen, no ear has heard, we are not among those who have not heard them. We are not among those who have not seen them. We are not among those who do not perceive them. But as for us, the Bible says, God has revealed them to us. So this year, and even in this, especially in this period of prayer and fasting, God wants to reveal to us things that other men or natural men cannot see with their physical eyes, cannot hear with their physical ears, they cannot perceive with their minds or their hearts. But God wants to reveal them. And actually the Bible says that he has revealed them to us. How does he reveal? He reveals through the Holy Spirit. He reveals through the Holy Spirit. So we yield to the Holy Spirit. We surrender to the Holy Spirit. We offer ourselves to Him. And then the Bible says, He reveals through the Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. The Holy Spirit searches the deep things of God. Where are deep things in a man? The deep things in a man are in his heart. So when the Bible says that the Holy Spirit searches all things, the deep things of God, is that the Holy Spirit scans, it searches the heart of God. Or he searches, the Holy Spirit searches the heart of God. Why is he searching the heart of God? There is something he wants to know. And why does he want to know it? We will see. The next verse says, For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. The Bible is asking, who knows the things of a man except that man himself? In other words, like you, you know what you want, you know what your plan is, you know yourself. So you are the best person who can tell us about yourself. And when you tell us about yourself, at least you cannot miss because you know yourself. You know yourself. The same way the Bible is saying that in the same way the Holy Spirit knows the mind of God. He knows the heart of God. That is why he is searching. So he is searching to know the mind of God. What is the mind of God concerning Hebron ministry? What is the mind of God concerning the nation of Kenya? What is the mind of God concerning the nations of the world in this time? What is the mind of God concerning my family? So the Holy Spirit is searching all those things because they are hidden in the heart of God. And the reason as to why he is searching all those things, the next verse, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. So he is searching those things so that he may reveal them to us. So he wants to show something that this year there is something that has been released. There is a grace that God has released upon your life. So he reveals it to you. Why? So that even as you make intercession, you pray according to revelation. You pray according to what he has shown you. What he has revealed to you. So he will tell you if you should get married this year. The Holy Spirit searches the mind and the heart of God. And he comes and reveals them to you. And he tells you there is grace for your marriage this year. And there is an advantage when people know things. People die or perish because of lack of knowledge. And the Bible says that the hidden things belong to God. But the revealed things belong to us and our children. So anytime God wants to give anything, he reveals it to men. And the moment you get revelation, you can lay hold on that what you need. So the reason as to why Holy Spirit is revealing you what is given to you is so that you may lay hold on it and claim it. So in other words, I mean this year there are things by the provisions of God. He has made them available to every one of you. Now our responsibility is for us by the Holy Spirit who searches the mind and the heart of God. It's for us to align ourselves to him that he may reveal the things that are freely given to us. Let me tell you, in every season there are things that are freely given. In every season there are graces that are just released. In other words, I mean there are things you could have struggled there before. But there are graces in every season. You find that ata kimaisha, tukiangali ata physical seasons, kama ni msimu wa maembe, unapatana maembe kila mahali. 
ukienda kuingia kwa nyumba yako kuna mtu hata hapo kwa geti yenyu anauza maembe bwana asifiwe hata wale watu hizi siku zingine wauzagi maembe si siku za msimu wa maembe utapata mtu anauza maembe ukienda kukaa chini hivi kwa ofisi ukikaa kuna mtu anapita hapo na maembe because it is that season so whenever a season for something comes there is grace for that thing so our responsibility is to know by the spirit of god the provisions that are made for that specific season yes, that is the work of the holy spirit so he reveals to us the next verse says these things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches but which the holy spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual things the next verse but the natural man does not receive these things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness to him nor can he know them because they are spiritually designed so these things are received spiritually that is why today in the service i'll be teaching you about fasting prayer and fasting that is why we need to pray and fast because these things are not carnally received and so many times when you are when your flesh is so exalted in your life and your spirit lacks place so you might not really get these things that is why you will notice that many times when you fast you you receive you receive so many revelations you know things easily you are swift because these things are canna, not carnally received but spiritually received verse 15 says but he who is spiritual judges all things yet he himself is rightly judged by no one so the reason as to why the holy spirit reveals this thing is so that we may judge matters and the bible is saying that if you are spiritual you know things spiritually you can judge matters I always tell you cannot judge a person that you have never seen in the spirit. If you have just seen them in the natural you cannot judge them. But when you see matters in the spirit you are superior to the natural because the natural is limited is lower. So when you see things concerning a nation spiritually the natural men cannot judge you but you are above them you can judge them. So the Holy Spirit reveals matters to us that we may judge things that we may judge matters that even when things come to us we are able to tell that this is from god or this is not from god because the holy spirit has revealed this thing to us the very first last verse of that scripture says for who has known the mind of the lord that he may instruct him but we have the mind of christ so the bible is asking who knows the mind of god that he may instruct him and then the bible says that we but we have the mind of christ so in other words this place of revelation is where the holy spirit reveals to you the mind of god so those of you who say we can never know the mind of god those of you who say how god's mind is so far away from you it's like we do not have access to god's will and to god's mind or to god's agenda concerning our lives and concerning even our our surroundings then then that is not true the bible is telling us that we have the mind of christ the mind of christ we have the mind of christ we understand the 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 mind of god so i beseech us by the mercies of god one of the things we need to seek is to know the mind of god it will be so easy for you to pray when you know the mind of god because you will just now pray that thing into be that is why jesus is teaching the disciples and telling them when you pray say our father in heaven hallowed be your name thy kingdom come let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven when you know the will of god it will be easy it will be easy that is why you see even many preachers even as they pray for people if there is a cripple who is rising up it is so easy when he sees it, he sees it in the spirit he says that there is a cripple or there is grace right now to rise up he does not even need to go because he has identified the grace that is available at that moment and because he has identified that it has been provided in the spirit and it has revealed it to men now they are able to rise up so there is so much power in revelation there is so much power in knowledge if many of you knew this you would spend much of your time seeking to know more than to do seeking to know what god will even you will seek more time to know even more than the time you seek to pray so you seek the heart of god more so that even as you pray you don't just pray for nothing especially in this time you are having prayer and fasting many of you what will you be praying for many of you are just yes will be giving you prayer points every day but but you need God to reveal to you the specific things you need to pray whether concerning your family and other things and one thing i have noted any time like now 
I decided that I will have this place or this time of prayer and fasting. Even before I begin prayer and fasting, like tonight, today in the, at night, God already brought me things that I should pray for. So anytime I go to the place of prayer, I do not go to struggle looking for materials to pray about or praying for. Because the Bible says we do not know what to pray for or even how to pray. But the Holy Spirit teaches us. So it is the place of being taught. How does he teach? He reveals to you the mind of God. He reveals to you the plans of God. And then you pray those plans of God into being. This is a very wide topic and I will teach it uh, in one of, these, one of these days, this month, as we continue in this season of prayer and, and fasting. I, I want us to, to pray for two things. This prophetic intercession. So, prophetic, in prophetic intercession, as I have just said, number one, you pray according to the revelation given to you. I want us to pray for two things. Number one, the Spirit of God reveals to us the things that are freely given to us. There is a provision that has been made in the Spirit for this season. I want you to listen very carefully. Number one, for the reason of praying. And number two, if you are in that area, you need to know that there is grace or a grace that has been released. In this season. And so there is special grace that has been released. And this is grace for marriages and weddings in this year or in this season. You know, last time I, the Lord spoke to me. I think it was uh, around, uh, is it October? I think it was about October. The Lord spoke to me concerning marriages. And he was now speaking to me specifically concerning, concerning those who are in marriages. And he was saying that there is healing. He has released grace or healing in marriages, restoration of marriages. So he was addressing those people who are in marriages. And we prayed about it. And uh, there are measures we have already taken concerning that, especially teaching those who are in marriages and praying for marriages and other things. And actually, I noticed later, even after that, it was a conversation like all over everywhere. And so many people even men of God were talking about it and they were praying about it and it is because there was a provision and that provision is still on even right now. So there is still healing and provisions or not provisions and uh, restoration in marriages. But this one I am talking about, I am talking about a special or a different one. And this is now grace for weddings and, and marriages. And uh, this year especially specifically for those people who seems like they have been delayed in getting married. So I am not just addressing the young people and the young ladies who want to get married, although they will also be married this year, but this year we are going to experience marriages, especially of those people who have waited for the Lord or on the Lord for a very long time concerning marriages. Some of those people, they seem to be forgotten some of them even they have already like made peace with themselves that they will live alone and they will not get married. I am talking about both men and women. But there is grace, especially the grace of weddings and marriages. I see so many weddings this year. And these weddings are for those people who thought that Miakayetu in Mepita, I cannot get someone to marry me right now. You see? Another person who says, eh, Mimi, my, my husband Alikufa and I was so young and uh, like uh, I don't think I'll get married again. You see? But I see a provision especially concerning marriages in that, in that area. So if you know or you are one of them or you know any one of those people tell them this is their year to get married. It is their year to, to get married. You know in Genesis chapter 2 when God made man, he said that it is not good for man to, to live alone. This is Genesis 2.18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. I want to tell you, don't be deceived by the world. It is not good for a man to live alone. And there is no single person that God created that they may live alone. It is the deception of the devil and the prince of this world. So he made sure that he made everyone with their, with their mates. 
You know in the book of Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah, in the Bible says that none shall lack a mate. None shall lack a mate. None shall lack a mate. So those people who tell you at your Nahesabu population, mpaka wanatoa wimbo wanakuuliza ati bwana yako peke yako utatolewa wapi? Ati juu wanakuambia sasa mabwana ni wachache. Those people don't know what they are saying. God makes or made sure that everyone has their mate. Search from the book of the Lord and read. Not one of these shall fail, not one shall lack her mate. For my mouth has commanded it and his spirit has gathered them. Some of the previous verse actually it is talking about birds. How birds will gather and God will make sure that every one of those birds will have a mate. You need to understand this is Isaiah, he was a prophet, so he spoke prophetically. So there is no single person on this world that God made that they, they do not have a mate. Everyone has a mate. So usikubali kufikiria ati wewe ulimaliziwa wanaume waliisha. Everyone has a mate. Everyone has a mate. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes 4 that two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Verse 10. For if they, if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls for he has no one to help him. Verse 11. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one become or uh, be warm alone? Verse 12. Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So the Bible says, God himself says, two are better than one. Don't be deceived by slogans in our generations that tells you, marriage is stress, afadhali ni kai peke yako, bila sema afadhali mkiwa wawili, two are better than one, for all those reasons. And I always tell you to look at the wisdom of God. And I was teaching the young people here and I was telling them, look at yourself. Why did God create two eyes? Kwa, kwa mwili wako? Why did God not put one eye? Why did God not put one ear? Why did God give you two ears? Why did God give you, even if you have one nose, but it has this side, it has another side? Why did God give you, even if you have one mouth, but ikona upper jaw and the lower jaw? Unaona? Why did God give you two hands? Why did God give you two legs or two feet? Why did God give you two kidneys? Why did God give you a set of everything? Two, 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 two. Because God saw it is not good for a man to live alone. Anything else does not come from God. So even those who had made peace, imagine someone who has never gotten married. And then they have even made peace with themselves that they will never be married. Some of them have been in churches. They have been praying and trusting God. But many of them have lost hope. But now because we know there is a provision that has been made in the spirit, we are also going to pray and intercede for them. And we are going to see marvelous weddings happening this time. You will see people getting married. People you never thought that they will get married. People who are at 40s, even at 50s. The only age, Bible, inasema sasa usiolewe tena, ni kutoka 60. Inasema mama kama we ni, ni mjane na umefukisha 60, sasa wewe umezeeka. But anyone below 60 years and they want to get married, this is their season of marriage. This is their era of marriage and they will not be delayed. Someone say amen. amen. Hallelujah. The next or the last thing that we are going to pray for, these things I'm not just telling you because we are just going to pray for them right now, but even later, let's know the things to pray are about. I want us to really pray for our children. I want us to really pray for our children in this season. What are we going to pray for our children? I want us to pray for our children, especially we, we pray for preservation or pro protection, preservation. And this is in every area of their lives. Number one, spiritually. There are so many spiritual attacks that are directed to children right now. The next one, mental attacks mental attacks. We pray for our children so much in the area of mental health. Let's pray for mental health. Let's also pray against any physical attacks. 
whether in schools or even when they are at home. But let's, especially in this season, take this thing seriously. Because we are praying as we are hearing or, or as we are seeing. Let's pray and intercede for our children very, very seriously. There is a great attack that has been released in the spirit to attack our children. The Bible says that children are a reward or a gift. That is in Psalms 127. They are a gift or a reward from God. So I want every person and every parent to know. Nikisema parent, ninamaanisha mtu yote mwenye sasa siyo mtoto. Sasa kama we siyo mtoto inamaanisha already we ni mzazi. Hata kama hauna mtoto at that time. But I want every one of us to know that children are gifts given, given to us. I am talking to parents. They are entrusted to us. We don't own children as many of you think. But they are entrusted to us especially for some time. So they are gifts given to us by God for some time. After some time you will not have that child. They will have their own lives and they will go. But they have been entrusted to us for, for some time. Think about Jesus who was the son of God and he was born. But God needed to instruct a man, his father. When Herod wanted to kill Jesus, God tells in the book of Matthew chapter 2, he tells him in verse 13, yes. He tells him, now when they had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek to destroy him. God needed a man or the father of the child to flee with Jesus that he may not be killed by Herod. Now, if Joseph did not do it, sasa mungu wange muambia kote na mtoto kama Herod hange hua mtoto. But ali entrust hiyo kwa mtu. So even as we pray and declare that God is the protection of our children, but we must know that he uses men to protect our children and to preserve them. Because at that time mtoto hana maisha yake. So when mzazi umekuwa entrusted, number one, to protect the children, to preserve them, to also train them, to advise them, to raise them in the, in the way of the Lord. That is the responsibility of every parent. So it is your responsibility, whoever is listening to me, to preserve our children. Children are the biggest target of the enemy. Because the enemy knows, if I can get this young child, her heart or his heart is young. So, so I can train them in my, in my way. So there is so much deception coming, especially in schools. That is where they are taught. And many of you, your children are being taught some things at an age that you cannot even imagine. Some of you are waiting. At unasema mpaka mtoto wako hawezi omba, hawezi imba kanisani. But the kind of stuff and the things that that child knows, or the things that they do, we need to protect our children. We need to declare preservation. And more so even we pray for physical, physical, physical protection and preservation. In Jesus' name, rise up on your feet wherever you are. In the name of the Lord Jesus.